go to step six to develop and implement an action plan. Now the planning format that I have over here is one that you can use. Paragraph one, the situation. In the situation paragraph, we want to describe the series of events that have taken place that have created the need for this problem to be solved. In the military, we call this the road to war. What happened that got us to this point? What sequence of events have taken place that have created the need for this project that we're working on? That brings everybody into the big picture. They understand the basis for what we're trying to do. In the situation paragraph, we also want to identify our assumptions. An assumption is basically something that we believe to be true, but we can't prove. And we go through all of our lives making assumptions on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, some assumptions that we will make are pretty generic, such as, I assume our company will be around long enough for us to finish this project, because if not, why start? Some assumptions might be more detailed. I assume I will have the same team from start to finish on this project. Well, maybe that's a good assumption, maybe it's not. Or maybe a better assumption might be, I assume I will have the same skills that I need within the project from start to finish. The faces on the team may change, but the skill set will remain. That might be a good assumption. As we make assumptions, we base our plan on those assumptions, and we write the assumptions down. So then as we execute the plan, we test and validate our assumptions. If we find that an assumption we made is false, then we have to change the plan. Because the house we thought we built in solid rock is really built on shifting sand. And so we need to modify our plan based on the new truth that our assumption was false. But if we test and validate our assumption, we find that it's true, then we can continue to go the way we've been because that's what we base the plan on. So in the situation paragraph, we're going to make assumptions and list them out so we can test and validate them through the execution phase of the project. Paragraph two is the mission. This is what we're going to do. Now we state the mission in a one or two sentence statement that answers the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. That is the what. Paragraph three, the execution, is the how. How are we going to carry out this mission? Subparagraph A is our overall concept. In this subparagraph, we take our five inch paintbrush and with broad brush strokes, we paint a picture and tell a story in story form. We're going to do this, then we're going to do this, then this is going to happen, which will allow us to do this. At this point, we're going to have to make a decision. We're going to do A or B. If we do A, we're going to do this. If we do B, we're going to do this. Regardless which course of action we've taken, we're going to come together over here. We're going to do this, and then we'll wrap up the project by doing this. Then, subparagraph B are sub-element tasks. And we will assign specific tasks to sections teams and individuals within our project team. That way everybody has a specifically assigned task and nobody is left out. Where two or more people or groups of people have to coordinate their actions, we will specify exactly how they're going to coordinate it. Because if Dennis needs to turn in equipment requests by such and such a date, then everybody else needs to have their request to Dennis by this date so he can combine them and submit the request by this date. That's a coordinating instruction. Then we go to resources and support. What do I need and where is it coming from? Paragraph five, how are we organized? How will we communicate? Now, if you've got a small team that's worked together forever and a day, you probably don't need a formal line and box drawing to lay out your organizational structure. Simple list of names, contact information, key responsibilities is probably enough. But if you've got a large team brought together for the first time for an ad hoc deal and the reporting channels are convoluted and complicated, then maybe we need a formal line of box drawing to really decide who needs to do what to whom and when. How will we communicate our success and our progress? Some reports, some communication will be time driven and some will be event driven. Now what we're going to do is we're going to print all this out. Everybody gets a copy. We sit them down in a room with their copy in hand. We go through the whole plan from appetizers 
to dessert and have a dialogue on the plan. And then as we go through this verbal dialogue, they can make marginal notes and annotate their plan with the increased information that comes out in the verbal dialogue to amplify the stuff that's already in the printed copy. And then when we're all done, we want to make sure they all understand it, right? So what we want to do is ask them, what are you going to do to carry out your part of the plan? And if those actions make sense, then I know we have understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the perfect plan that is not understood and as a result is poorly executed will fail. But an adequate plan that everybody understands and as a result of that understanding is vigorously executed will more than likely succeed. We don't have to have the perfect plan. We just have to do it perfectly. And that perfect execution comes from knowing what the plan is in the first place. So the question is, what are you going to do to carry out your part of the plan? <laughs>